here was my outline. We, we are now, uh, we've done this. We're now we're going to move on to part two. And just to uh, remind ourselves of the motivating questions, atmospheric curvatures, mostly solar rate. Why, why is it persist at night? And why is it higher than it ought to be? Um, I, guess, I guess we've answered that now, right? The atmosphere doesn't really come in layers. We tend to say regions now instead of layers. Uh, but there is such a thing as a Chapman function. And sometimes it's a pretty good approximation of the way things work. Uh, you uh, still have it at night because of the long lifetime of O plus, which is due to its slow reaction with N2 primarily. Usually slow reaction with N2. Even, even when you accelerate this action, reaction, it's still slow for an ionic reaction. Um, the reason that there's, that there's this F region at around 300 kilometers, which persists at night, is, again, long lifetime of O plus. OK, so when we got to Mars and Venus, Mars, Venus, there were surprises. This is now long, long ago. But, but uh, when they started flying planetary missions, they put ion mass spectrometers on them, plunged them down in the atmosphere, and got profiles of the, uh, of the ionospheres of these planets. Uh, you, of course, you can, you can get an uh, ionospheric profile just from radio occultation or, or something. But, but, but now you can actually measure what's in the ionosphere. And Mars as a surprise. It's mostly O2+. Plus. There's a player on the Earth, but not a major player. And then there's CO2+, plus, uh, not that much of it. Um, and there is O+, plus, but not very much. It mostly just takes over at very high altitude. It eventually does become the dominant ion, just like on Earth. But, but by the time you get up there, there's hardly any left. O2+, plus, O2 is the gas that we associate with life, arrows. Um, so I, I, this, must have, this must have ignited some, some speculation when they found O2 plus on Mars. Um, interestingly enough, on Venus, same thing. It's funny how Venus and Mars aren't, don't see, I mean, Venus is, you know, it's a massive atmosphere. Mars has hardly any ma atmosphere at all. But, but compositionally, O2 plus, dominant ion in Venus. Venus, you do have O plus, just like Mars, more like the Earth. But again, by the time you get into the O plus zone, there's, you're down an order of magnitude or so in the ionosphere, and, and you don't have this big F region at high altitude. You just have all this O2 plus down below. Also, uh, CO2 plus and C plus, which shouldn't, shouldn't be surprising if you know anything about Venus at all. So, so how do you explain this? Uh, most of O2 plus, also O plus, there's no F layer or F region. And, and at night, the ionosphere largely goes away on Venus and Mars. And that shouldn't be too surprising either, because Remember, that the reason is a long lifetime of O plus, and there's very little of it. So, so the questions now become, why doesn't O plus have a long li longer lifetime on Venus and Mars? And, and why is there so much O2 plus when they don't really have any O2 at all? So to answer that, we need to look at the atmospheres. Now, this is. Uh, these are the various molecules, the abundant in bars. Bars is a funny unit. Uh, it's an atmosphere. One bar is basically the amount of pressure of, a, of the Earth's atmosphere. Nowadays, I think you would say kilohectopascals. I hate that hectopascal stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's 1,000 millibars, a bar. That's an atmosphere. So on the Earth, you have 78% N2, 21% O2. Uh, tiny bit of water, very variable, of course, 1%. And I'm calling it 0. 0.0004 of uh, carbon dioxide because we just cracked the, the uh, 400 parts per million level of carbon, of carbon dioxide. 
Um, and, and and then on uh, and then there's arg there's argon, helium, but they're not important on this scale. Um, Venus. Now this is interesting. If you look at Venus, sort of a from the big picture, very little N2, but it's not that different. It's not that different from Earth. It's okay. It's three times as much, but but uh, four times as much, but but uh, same order of magnitude as as the Earth's N2, and and more of it. But you would hardly notice the N2 because there's 87 bars of carbon dioxide, 97 percent of the total on the surface of Venus. And, and of course, that drops off with its scale height as you go higher and higher. And, and CO2 is pretty heavy, so it drops off pretty fast because its scale height is smaller because heavier things have smaller scale heights. And, but but it, CO2 remains dominant throughout the most of the Venus atmosphere. And then you have SO2, which, which in some sense plays a similar role on Venus as water does on the Earth. Makes clouds. Um, and then on Mars, similar composition to Venus, but much, much, much less of it, because Mars is small and it wasn't able to hold on to a lot of its gases. and. Uh, it doesn't seem to have generated a whole lot of its gases early in its history. So it's, it's, uh, the, the pressure at the surface is uh, some similar, I think, to the stratopause of the, of the Earth. It's, it's as if you took the lower two spheres of the Earth's atmosphere and just, and just uh, got rid of them. It started right up at the, uh, the mesosphere. And then there's a little N2 on, on Mars, some argon. Tiny bit of water. So, what happens when you get an atmosphere that's dominated by carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide drops off rapidly. Here, down here, you're fully mixed. Everything's the same scale height, parallel lines. As you get into the diffusively separating Martian thermosphere, uh, CO2 and N2 now have different scale heights because N2 is lighter than CO2. You get some CO, which becomes fairly important higher up. This is from dissociation processes on CO2. And then you get O, just like on the Earth. O takes over. You're getting it basically from the CO2, dissociative processes. It's similar stuff. You're going to break apart CO2. You're going to make O. The O is going to float to the surface quite rapidly because it's a lot lighter than CO2 because CO2 is so heavy. And, and you have an O-dominated upper thermosphere on Mars which you would think would lead to you know, a sort of a terrestrial-like, that is, an Earth-like ionosphere. It's, it's, it's not all that different looking in terms of the thermosphere, except that CO, you got CO2 down here instead of N2. Venus, by the time you get high in altitude, Venus and Mars look really similar because you've, you know, you've sort of integrated through that whole lower atmosphere thing, and Mars has less gravity. So by the time you get up to 120 kilometers, I don't know, let's compare the scales. Let's, let's, let's see. 10 to the 12th at 100 kilometers. Uh, let me do 120 kilometers. 120 kilometers, 10 to the 11th CO2 on Mars. 120 kilometers, 10 to the 12th. OK, so Venus is, is still an order of magnitude more dense, but that's less than it had been. and. Uh, and then once you get, once you get to uh, up here, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at the transition altitude between o, CO2 and O. That happens at 10 to the 9th at about 160 on Venus. And it happens at 10 to the 8th, 10 to the 7 and a half at, at 190 on Mars. So it's shifted. It's shifted a little, but morphologically, kind of similar. Um, and then you got CO and N2, kind of a minor player on Venus. Um, uh, but there is interesting chemistry that, that comes through, the, through some of these CO2, CO and NO chains. So, so what does an ionosphere look like when it's, uh, when it's dominated by O and instead of N2, CO2? Well, 
First of all, the temperature profiles look different. Here's the Earth's thermosphere. Gets no, no, forgetting, putting aside the solar cycle variability, this is for average solar conditions. Get up to about 900 K. Um, Venus it has a thermosphere in the sense that it gets, I mean, of course, we know that Venus' surface is very hot. And then it drops down, and then you have a thermosphere, a similar thing, all this energy is being deposited here. And then it goes uh, to an isothermal profile, but very, very cold. Hardly can call that a thermosphere. Some people call it the cryosphere. The, the, uh, the reason is that all that carbon dioxide is radiating away energy. Carbon dioxide, as you know, is a greenhouse gas. That means it's active in the infrared. It can absorb infrared radiation. Anything that can absorb infrared radiation can also emit infrared radiation. Once the atmosphere goes optically thin, uh, carbon dioxide is a cooler, not a warmer. I still call it a greenhouse gas in the sense that it's, it's, it's radiationally active, but it's uh, going the other way. So it's cooling. The, uh, the Venus thermosphere. And in fact, the increase in carbon dioxide is having a similar effect on the Earth thermosphere. It's cooling it instead of warming it. And Mars, uh, similar thing, except of course it's colder to begin with, colder at the surface. Is there a song about that? It's about being cold on Mars. Um, and it gets even colder, and then it heats up a little from all of the deposition of solar EUV and then reaches an equilibrium temperature that's really quite 200K. So, so uh, but morphologically, you know, you have this sort of the same, same shape anyway. And the chemistry, of course, is not that different either. You have uh, H nu, not a whole lot of energetic electrons on the, on the, uh, on Venus and Mars, but, but you have Two things, main things, again, highly simplified chemical schematic. You ionize CO2, make CO2 plus. You ionize O, you make O plus. And then chemistry ensues. The CO2 plus can react with O to make O plus, or it can dissociatively recombine, which makes CO. That might explain some of where that CO comes from. Um, it can react with O, but in a different channel or a different branch of the CO2 plus plus O reaction. Instead of making O plus, it makes O2 plus. Okay, now we have an explanation. I mean, when originally they, you know, they thought that this was the dominant channel, but after those pioneering, to coin a phrase, measurements of, uh, of, of the uh, Venusian or Cytherian ionosphere, uh, they realized that, that this channel is important. So you're making O2 plus. That's where that O2 plus comes from. It's another way you can make O2 plus is from all that O plus can react with the CO2 and make O2 plus. And both of these are atom ion interchange reactions, meaning that it's not just hopping an electron from one ship to the next. You've got to break a bond. In this case, you're, break, you're, you're making some, some uh, metastable state of CO3 plus for an instant, and then it falls apart in a different way with, uh, with the CO and O2 plus as the, uh, as the products. In this case, it's a little simpler. You're still making CO3 plus, uh, but you, you know, you're just glomming this O plus onto here, but then it falls apart, breaking this bond, breaking the... Uh, the uh, the C off of the uh, 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 off of the off of the O2, the breaking the CO off of the O2. So you can imagine CO is like a C with two O's on it. So you glom an extra O on, and then you and then you break it off where you connected the CO2 to that. I don't have a schematic on. I don't have I don't have one of those little bubble diagrams of that. I got to get the Comet program to make me a bubble diagram of CO2 breaking apart. So you make O2 plus. Now. You have CO2 plus and O2 plus. Both of those can recombine with an electron. Those are fast reactions. You make atomic oxygen, maybe some CO. And, and so low down in the Venus and Mars uh, ionospheres looks a lot like Earth. 
molecular ions, dissociative recombination, E region, Chapman layer. Looks a lot like a good old simplified Chapman layer molecular ionosphere. Now, there's plenty of O up there, we saw, and there's plenty of CO2 up there, as we saw. CO2, I, I'm calling it a weak bond. It's not that weak. It's actually pretty strong, but it's not as strong as CO. It's not as strong as CN. It's not as strong as N2, strongest bond in the universe. So to do this, you have to break apart CO2+, plus, which is not nearly as challenging as breaking apart N2. And so this reaction is pretty fast. This reaction is, is, is also fast. Similar, similar story. You've got to break a bond, but it's not, it's not a triple bond. And so these reactions are, are pretty fast. And so unlike on Earth, where all the ionization at high altitude gets stuck in the O plus bin, uh, in this case, up to a pretty high altitude, you have a way of making O2 plus, which inevitably leads to its destruction. Somebody was just asking me, what happens to all those ions? Do they escape? Do they supply the, uh, the magnetosphere? Well, some of them do, but most of them diffuse downward, find some molecules, react, make a molecular ion, dissociatively recombine, and end up as atoms, neutral atoms. And that happens a lot faster on Venus and Mars. So consequently, there's no F region. It's an E region made up of O2 plus. And up at higher altitude, uh, you still have, well, it's a, you, have, you would call this an F region, but it's just not dominant. So this is what a high carbon ionosphere looks like. Yes? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a huge function of altitude, so I don't have a number okay. for you. But, um, but, but I, on, in, in, in this, this is, of course, one, one measurement <laughs> from, from uh, Pioneer Venus. Um, uh, in, at this particular spot, um, this, is, uh, this is chemically controlled. You can tell just by looking at it that it's chemically controlled way up way up to several hundred kilometers. And the reason you can tell that is because there's, you know, there's no bulge here. There's no accumulation. So these guys are, are getting destroyed by something. And what they're getting destroyed by, by is chemistry. Um, it's on the Earth that the diffusive process is dominant. Um, and I, you know, I drew that, that diagram for Earth. I'm going to try to find my cursor this time. So I can actually do this if I, if I, uh, without hopping around, I can actually do that. Look at that. The Earth, uh, above 200 kilometers, uh, it's diffusion. It's long lifetime, so you have diffusive control. And, and this arrow, I put this arrow in that direction for a reason. The stuff, all this stuff up here is gradually filtering down to its destruction. And uh, this arrow here um, uh, doesn't. Well, it doesn't really mean anything because diffusion is minor here, but but uh, but but um, this this, uh, this 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 sharp gradient here at the bottom of the F region, which which looks kind of like a Chapman layer and might trick you into thinking it's a Chapman layer, it's not. I, I mean, you can call it anything you want, but but it's not it's not that process. It's not that radiative process. It's what it is is the is the atom the atomic ions diffusing down and destroying themselves. It's the ions here being eaten away by chemistry, by being converted into molecular ions and consequently to atoms through the extremely rapid dissociative recombination processes.
Okay, back to low tech. So, where were we? We were on this plot. Also have uh, the other residue of these processes, the CO2 plus, uh, C plus. Uh, CO plus is, is present, but it's another story. It, it, uh, it, it, uh, it can also dissociatively recombine. Um, and, and uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, you can sort of see they're getting, they're, go, they're going away down here. That data's getting, probably looks like it's getting noisy down here. Um, but let's see. That's a good question. Let's see if we can dope it out from the chemistry. The, uh, the, the CO2 plus is constantly being converted to O2 plus or O plus. So you're constantly losing it um, in, a, in a regime where this is the dominant ion, then, then it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the major, the major reservoir. Um, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm, my, 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 my quick reaction to the question, I'm trying to see if I'm, I'm saying it right, is that, is that CO2 plus is chemically controlled. You don't expect to see uh, all the ions doing the same thing when one of them is in charge of the chemistry. And so consequently, uh, what's happening down here, of course, is you're, you're now actually running out of, of ionization. Um, but the, uh, uh, so you know, this is somewhat of a Chapman layer. You're, there's, very, there's less and less ionization going on, but, um, but the CO2 plus is, is being converted at a slower and slower rate into O2 plus and therefore becoming a larger proportion of the ionosphere because as you get lower and lower, there's less O, okay? Right, you, you're, you're, making, you're making this, but as you get lower in the atmosphere and there's less, proportionally less O, um, well, there's proportionally less O, but there's, there's numerically more O. Yeah, the, the, well, you, you can tell the peak of the ionization rate is right in here, uh, but then, but then, it, but then the ionization rate is is, is continuing to decrease. Um, but uh, the uh, not from Pioneer Venus. I'm wondering now if uh, some of the later Venus missions had uh, had, um, had went, went lower, but but you know. Um, there, there, ha there haven't been that many missions of this type. Um, you know, there was the, there was the, uh, the great Venus radar mapper and so forth. But, but uh, you got to go what back a ways to, to get these ionospheric measurements. Um, and, and of course, I mean, you know, this is getting low down for a, for a, sta for a satellite, even, even, uh, even on Venus. So, so, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens down here. Um, but, but basically, my, my, I'm, I'm claiming that, uh, that, it's chemical, that, that we're in a chemically controlled regime, that the rate at which CO2 is being converted into O2 plus, the rate at which CO2 plus is being converted into O2 plus is, is, starting, to, uh, is starting to slow down, and you get, so you get an accumulation of CO2 plus. It's, it's, only, you know, it's only a few percent. Of the of the atmosphere here, I mean, look, remember log scale. What you really have on, on Venus is a O2 plus E region. So, summing up, on Venus and Mars, atomic 
oxygen ion reacts quickly with CO2. And same thing for CO2 plus, reacts quickly with atomic oxygen. It's because uh, compared to N2, CO2 is not as strongly bonded and, and just reacts faster. It's, more, it's just more reactive than N2. So Venus and Mars have E-region type ionospheres, Chapman type ionospheres, uh, controlled mostly by photochemical equilibrium. Earth doesn't have enough carbon in its atmosphere to do this. Now, at high altitude, it sort of runs out of O2. Uh, atom ion interchange of O, of o plus with N2 is slow. And so you get this high, dense, persistent F region. And all those interesting currents and all that ionospheric variability um, that uh, you can't get in, if, you're, if you're in photochemical equilibrium, you don't get all that interesting morphology because you create the ionosphere, you destroy the ionosphere. It, 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 it doesn't have all of that structure like it would, uh, like it does on the Earth. So, so the reason the Earth is, uh, is uh, different is, uh, is that it doesn't have as much carbon dioxide. So it's Earth that's anomalous. Venus and Mars are in their more natural state. What happened? Maybe plants. Is there, does any carbon wish to self-identify? <laughs> oh, carbon-based life form. I see a carbon-based life form. <laughs> It's a really interesting question. I ask this about ge of geologists all the time. Uh, uh, how did the carbon get to where it is? Where it is, I can tell you where the carbon is. I'll show you some carbon. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Letchworth State Park in upper, uh, upstate New York State, uh, where the mighty Genesee has, in short, 100,000 years carved this canyon on its way to uh, Lake Erie. Uh, the guidebook says that it took 100 million years to lay down these sedimentary rocks and only 100,000 to uh, carve the canyon. And uh, here's, here's another shot of Middle Fall that left with State Park. And, and there's, there's lots of carbon all around in this shot, right? Plenty of carbon on the sides and on the banks of the Genesee, but I'll show you some real carbon. Now, here's carbon. Anybody know where this is? This is the White Cliffs of Dover. Calcium carbonate, layers and layers and layers of calcium carbonate. The geologists will tell you that this is largely inorganic processes. Um, there's certainly, uh, you know, there's a lot of crushed seashells in here too. But if you didn't have that, would the inorganic geological processes do it anyway through precipitation, through just regular precipitation of carbon dioxide into the ocean and then reacting with other things like especially calcium. Oh, here, here's one, here's a photo I took. Uh, I didn't take those, those are internet photos, but I took this one. This is uh, Florida Keys, where they've cut a channel right through the middle of the key. The keys turn out to be islands built on, on, on crushed, on compressed coral reefs. that have now turned into cement. You can build houses out of this stuff. It's calcium carbonate, slightly different. It's got other gunk in it, I guess. This is, this is definitely coming from, from coral. And it's just layers and layers of carbon and calcium, but lots of carbon. All that carbon is buried in the Earth's crust. And, uh, and, and here's, how it, here's, how it, here's how it works. This is a, this is a uh, cartoon from, uh, I think it's Goody and Walker long ago. This, this is your sort of standard uh, Earth sciences uh, uh, basic carbon cartoon budget where the boxes are the number of gigatons of carbon and the fluxes are the, are the fluxes of gigatons per year. So, so you, okay, so you got 760 gigatons in the atmosphere, but you have 
four times 10 to the seventh in carbonate rocks. And then you have dissolved ocean, dissolved organic and deep intermediate and deep ocean, you know, all this carbon floating around in the ocean. And if you look at the fluxes through the surface ocean, well, you, they are definitely mediated by marine biota, but also by these inorganic processes. And then eventually you realize that you have fluxes in and out of the atmosphere, mostly through the ocean, but also through vegetation. And this is represents, uh, uh, this represents you know, changes in the carbon budget. Um, now, here is the only way to get the carbon back out of the atmosphere, of the rocks, which is to burn it and make a volcano. Except now we got this flux through the vegetation and this, you know, what's this? This little cartoon over here represents our puny and ineffective attempts to restore the Earth's atmosphere to its natural state. So my question for discussion is, well, here's the answers. I, you know, we, did, we did the top three. The reason that Venus and Mars are so different from the Earth is because they have carbon dioxide. And the F region ionosphere is unique, as far as we know. Uh, it's because its atmosphere is strange. It doesn't have carbon dioxide much has this oxygen in very unusual states, O2, highly, highly flammable and toxic. Um, once had much higher levels of carbon dioxide, but most of it's in the crust now. So the F region is uh, kind of a new development. It's an artifact of processes going on in the Earth itself. And my question for discussion is, that if you saw an F region, what would it mean? Would it mean that there was life on that planet? Because it didn't have carbon? It's right? This is why I keep putting this to my geological colleagues. It's, 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 to what extent has life itself mediated the carbon budget? We know it's mediated the oxygen budget, of course. But to what extent has it mediated the carbon budget? And, and, of course, and the answer seems to be it's mediated quite a lot. But the, the more difficult question is, if there were no life, would you still have, suck all the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere just by having an ocean? So my answer to this question, you can make up your own answer, or we could vote. But uh, my answer to this question is, well, probably not, but it might be an indicator of an ocean. And if you got an ocean, you're halfway there. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs>
Or did you see CO plus? Very tricky stuff. Yes? Um, so you were talking earlier about the, the balance between the night and day, and, and part of the reason we keep our ionospheres is because the, the day comes back around. And uh, it just doesn't dissipate uh, the night. Yeah, if, if you had a long enough night, it would go away. So and in, 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 uh, in, in five million years, we won't have a nighttime ionosphere anymore, probably. Oh, oh! It, 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 the the F region ionosphere uh, has a lifetime, according to our model calculations, of uh, of about a day. Yeah, which it will be. Yeah, okay. That's an interesting exercise. It's yeah. like, how long will it take until we don't have a nighttime ionosphere anymore? Yeah. I, I can't remember how what the rate. Well, I know what the rate is. It's it's a seven tenth of a second per year because right, that's the rate at which they have to add leap seconds. So yeah. the Earth's rotation rate is slowing by seven-tenths of a second per year. So in 500 million years, no more nighttime ionosphere. By, by dawn, I mean, by dawn, the ionosphere will be gone. Something like that. Yeah, we can't really do the experiment, but you can, you can make a model calculation. You can watch the decay throughout the night. Uh, it's, it's, of course, strongly influenced by those electrodynamics. But if you just sit here, like, say, in mid latitude, like right here, and watch the ionosphere overnight, it has a... It has a pretty regular pattern, you know. It goes up, comes down. Window, I mean, to, to keep an <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. And of course, Venus, which barely rotates at all. The backside of Venus looks pretty strange. There's no ionosphere, and, and the thermosphere gets really cold because there's hardly anything heating it, and you have all that carbon dioxide radiating heat away. So the backside of the the night side of the <laughs> Pardon me, but the night side of the Venus uh, uh, upper atmosphere ionosphere is, is extremely cold, hence the expression cryosphere. Last time, 